Hello and welcome to Stive. My name is Andy. Thank you for, for joining me today. I hope that you're well wherever you are. Let's begin as always with our prayer of approach. Loving God, we're here to worship you. Help us to remember that you are here with us. May we pray to you in faith. Use technology to connect with each other and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me light in pastures green. He leads me by the still. So this is the time where we share a bit of our own story and see how that fits in with the, the good news of the gospel story later. So this time, if you're watching this live, please share this in the comments. If you're if you're watching this at a different time, think through what your, you know, just think through what your answer would be. Can you think of a time when you've been led to a situation or a place where it's been tough, but you know it's right? where you've been led to a situation that's tough and tricky and challenging, but you know it's the right thing. So let's take a moment to share our stories. Go. Welcome back. Thanks for sharing. Let's sing Jesus, the name high over all. Angels reveal 
and more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith, of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus and show us the way. Amen. If you're watching live, please type now a word into the comments that expresses why God is particularly good for you today. Let's pray. Thank you for sharing. Let's sing together, Light of the World, You Step Down Into Darkness.
to confess our sins and failings to God. When, when I say, Lord, have mercy, if you'll reply, Lord, have mercy. Let's pray. For our foolishness and our thoughtless use of the gifts of your creation, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For our neglect of you and our failure to care for others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For our selfishness in prayer and our carelessness in worship, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here is good news. For all who put their trust in Christ, Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. So let's turn to the scriptures now. Ruth is going to read it to us today. The passage today um, is a bit of a, a bit of a funny one in that the, the new bit is very short and in the middle, but it includes a passage we looked at um, a couple of weeks back and another passage we looked at a couple of weeks back, which top and tail the bit today. But today it's the story of Jesus in the wilderness. So it's Mark 1, 9 to 15, but we're particularly focusing on verses 12 and 13. So as Ruth reads this to you, I invite you to listen out, particularly on that middle chunk of any words or phrases that jump out at you, which surprise you, which are particularly alive and potent, and make a note of them on the on the sheet or on a bit of paper. So let's hear the good news according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. So this is the start of Lent for this year, and we always begin Lent by thinking about Jesus's time in the wilderness, and we often call it a temptation, but that's not really what's going on here in Mark. It's quite different to the other two Gospels. And in a way, it's not that suited to Lent. We've got the 40 days. But unlike the other two Gospels that talk about this story, so Matthew and Luke, there's no fasting or hunger in Mark's Gospel. Jesus doesn't go hungry for those 40 days. It's not the case that he spends 40 days getting weaker and weaker and weaker physically, and then the devil pops up. To, to tempt him to sin, it's a different picture in Mark, and we're going to unpick that today. This is Jesus on the offensive in the wilderness, where the, in, going into the heartland of the enemy to do battle for 40 days, sustained throughout by angels. The core word um, behind this, the fact that Satan tempted or tested Jesus, is, is a word which could be translated either way. In the version that Ruth read to us, it was translated as tempted, as in sort of enticed Jesus, tried to get Jesus to, to sin or be bad. But it also means, and the more natural meaning, is actually to be tested. And that's the way that Mark uses it all through his gospel. This is Mark's kind of understanding of the word. When, when the Pharisees come to Jesus to kind of test him and trick him and to to make him slip up, that's this word. It's the word uh, which implies that this is a kind of combative encounter. This is, this is the forces of evil against the forces 
of the divine. And it's a, it, this kind of long drawn out 40 day battle. And there are sides, there's obviously Jesus and Satan, but you've also got on Satan's side, quite ambiguous, said the wild beasts were there. And on Jesus' side, you have the angels sustaining him. So this is a, a cosmic battle going on here in the wilderness, in the enemy heartland, which is what the wilderness, what the wilderness means. And it finishes with Jesus coming out of the wilderness, saying, preaching the good news, the Evangelion, which we've said before, is kind of preaching the victory, saying, I've won. So this, this encounter is Jesus engaging the enemy in combat and coming out saying, I've won. And that's a kind of microcosm of life encapsulated in this story, because our lives are a battle, a grudge, uh, a, a, a trial. Uh, we face all kinds of testing, things thrown at us. We engage in battle with evil, not evil people, but with evil all the, all the time, in many ways, shapes and forms. But in the end, we know that the victory is God's and we know that the angels are there sustaining us too. So this is our story. Um, this happened to Jesus, but this is, uh, this is a, a snapshot of the Christian life. We're called to be in the wilderness, where, in the places where, where evil kind of has an easy ride, the places where evil feels at home. We're called to go there in God's power and God's strength and to do battle in the same way that Jesus did in this. So sometimes the battles we face are quite dramatic and we get a lot thrown at us and it can be almost overwhelming. Sometimes the, the battle, the friction, the combat between, between us as Christians and the, the, the forces of evil, that they can be very drawn out. 40 days is quite a long drawn out battle and the, you know, the coronavirus thing is getting more and more and more drawn out. Um, it's, a, it's a test of endurance. And sometimes we battle just the fact that things decay over time. Um, the word uh, I think most neatly expresses that is the, the physics term entropy. The idea that things get more disorganized and, and broken down and, and run down over time. If we just leave things, they get messy. So we all, we need to step in to tidy things up, um, to make things good, to make things fresh. There's a constant need to keep on top of things which are getting out of control. Anyone who um, does any housework will know, know that. Anyone who maintains buildings knows that. Things tend to get messy and disheveled over time and you need to step in constantly to, well not constantly, but periodically to, to get things to get things refreshed and put back to normal. So the battle that we face takes all of these shapes and it, it, it has many, many different forms. So I'm talking very broad terms here, but I trust that you can apply a concrete example to your own life where, where life feels like a battle, be it a dramatic one, be it a, a long drawn out one, or be it just a thing gradually unfurling. The, it says in the passage that Satan was accompanied by wild beasts, which is kind of picture language used throughout the Bible in the in the Old Testament and the New for the the kind of power, the systems of the world which get co-opted into evil. So there are so political structures can become satanic, uh, church structures can become satanic. The um, ideologies can become evil and satanic and all of these encapsulate the wild beasts which keep people down that oppose the flourishing of people which got what God wants in this world sickness and disease are things which hit us and they have a spiritual dimension our battle is against all of these things our battle isn't actually against humans it's against the evil and the, the chaos which drives people to do bad things. People are good. They might have got the wrong end of the stick. They might need 
a change of track, but people fundamentally are good. In the book of Isaiah, there's a passage, um, Isaiah 11, which we often read at Christmas time about the saying that the, the leopard will lie down with the lamb. Um, there's this, there's a sense that one day, one day the wild beasts will be tamed. The wilderness, the place of evil and chaos will be made straight. The, the hills we brought down, the low places we brought up, there'll be a path through the wilderness. So I've been doing this painting of the wilderness. I did this a few weeks back. You probably, you, you might well have seen this before. Um, but this is my, my picture of the wilderness. It's based on um, the desert in Israel. So the place where Jesus was could have looked a bit like this. But there's a kind of path going through it. There's a path which is taming the wilderness step by step. And that's the, that's the Christian journey, that our job is to engage in the process of taming the wilderness, uh, defeating the things which are opposed to God that we come across every day. And we know the good news in this, and we know that we are sustained by angels. We're served by angels. We just need to look out and notice and to receive. And finally, it's good news. Evangelion. Jesus wins. Now, this battle won't be sorted in our lifetimes, but in the biggest time scale possible, we know which way this is going. Jesus wins. Satan loses. Death will be defeated once and for all. In the meantime, our life is going to be a battle. It's going to be a slog. But may you know the sustaining presence of the angels, and may you know that you're on the right side. Amen. Let's sing a great song of God's faithfulness through the toughest times. Faithful one, so unchanging.
So we're called to enter the wilderness following in Jesus' footsteps. And one of the ways in which we do that is by praying. Prayer is a way of bringing God's kingdom here into this world. When we pray, it makes a difference. So let's pray for the needs of the world. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, if you'll reply, hear our prayer. And if you would like to type, if you're watching live, this is, if you'd like to type any initials of people who you want us all to pray for, um, then, then people will, will, will pray for them too. Let's pray. For the peace that is from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, for the life and unity of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may worship God in spirit and in truth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all members of the church who do battle with evil, the whole company of God's people facing trial and temptation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the governments of nations, that they may seek justice and peace for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our own country and local community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick, for the afflicted and for prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may truly serve him who called us out of darkness into his marvellous light, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that with all who have served God and are now at rest, we may enter into the fullness of unending joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So as you face battles, be they dramatic or drawn out or just things unravelling, may you have courage, may you have fortitude, may you know that the angels are on your side. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.